Hey folks, my name is Daniel and welcome back to the finance channel. Well, Paul, you're doing great out there as always. Here today, I want to talk to you all about a whole variety of different things ranging to what's going on in crypto at this point in time and kind of my expectations moving forward over the coming weeks and months. But I also want to go through some updates pertaining to Voyager Digital, some highlights over the past couple of days and weeks, and some interesting projections that I actually haven't done in quite some time. So anyways, if you end up enjoying this video, please consider leaving a comment down below. And with that all out of the way, let's get into the video here. So first and foremost, I want to touch on what we've seen as far as crypto price action. And again, there really is no reason to sugarcoat this. It's been a bad past few months, really since this high that we hit back in November of just about $70,000 you know, crypto has been in a downtrend. And we've seen this across a variety of other smaller cap cryptocurrencies. And, you know, in addition to that, a lot of crypto related companies uh, like Voyager and Coinbase, which have kind of been under a lot of pressure at that same time. Now, what are my thoughts moving forward here? Well, there's a fascinating observation here that I made um, just yesterday, actually, and I'm going to zoom into the chart uh, to give you a better look at this. This massive rally that we've had over the past, I want to say, 30 hours at this point as of recording this video, or I guess, yeah, 25, 26 hours has really come from one main thing. And this thing has triggered a lot of positivity in the crypto market, in the stock market, and it, and it came right here. This kind of little bump, I, I guess it, it seems very little uh, given what we've seen here over the past a little while, but this bump from around $36,400 to $36,800, give or take, you know, right about 400 bucks, came from one major event just before 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What happened at that exact same time? Well, one of the biggest companies in the world, Amazon, reported re earnings results. And, you know, you can argue whether or not they were good or bad. In my opinion, they were kind of mediocre. But the stock took it in a major, major way or in a major positive way. Now, why is this? Well, the reason is Amazon, among a lot of other companies, has been under a lot of pressure over the past few months. And it isn't just Amazon it's a lot of cryptocurrencies as well. Ever since the Fed announced that they have a plan to potentially raise interest rates throughout 2022, we have been in a major, major risk off environment where pretty much everything is taken as a negative and even a positive sometimes ends in deep, deep red. I think moving forward, what we're going to have to see is positivity come back. To asset classes across the board, and that will be the moment as to when crypto will potentially begin to go up again. Now, you know, does this mean Bitcoin's going to continue going down or rebound? You know, no one knows where crypto is going in the short term, right? Even in the midterm, right? Over the next few months, over the next couple of years, no one knows. But generally speaking, we can all look at trends and we can all say, all right, this is what's going on. And this is what needs to happen in order for us to kind of regain that positive momentum that we saw here again throughout the end of the summer into the kind of uh, fall time and winter time and throughout the beginning of 2021. So we'll see what ends up happening. That's my thought process behind it. And obviously, Bitcoin is an indicator uh, as to what's going on in the overall market. So if Bitcoin's going down, everything else is going down. If Bitcoin's going up, you can generally expect things to be going do, uh, doing well, uh, as well as in terms of a lot of the, the larger cap coins and uh, even some smaller projects. That's really where you get those uh, those massive gains. But, you know, with that does come more risk. Either way, that's what's going on with crypto. We want crypto to do well in terms of Voyager. But one of the great things about their business model is that they benefit and continue to operate no matter if Bitcoin goes up or down. This isn't true for a lot of mining companies out there where you know, Bitcoin needs to be about a, a certain price for them to be making profits with Voyager. You know, th this volatility really is great as it does set up for a lot of periods of positivity like this. And, you know, obviously, this is the time to uh, accumulate, in my opinion. Either way, that's my thought. 
Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Now, in terms of the actual fundamental case for Voyager, and if you're not familiar with them, I have an article linked in the description down below if you want to uh, just kind of read about it, what it is. And, you know, when we look at Voyager here, and these are just um, app store rankings that I have, they've recovered pretty decently, you know, especially given what we've seen um, in terms of price action. I'm actually pretty dang surprised. Um, and if you haven't yet watched, I highly do recommend that you go ahead and check out the interview that I had with Steve Ehrlich, the CEO and co-founder of Voyager, just a, about a, you know less than a week ago at this point. And, you know, it was such a good interview. I mean, the, the, the things I managed to get Steve to say, um, you know, I, I, my kind of goal with that was to really focus on a lot of things that haven't been asked before and not just, you know, kind of continue to emphasize on the same damn points like, you know, when's international expansion? When's the debit card coming out? When is this? When is that? I tried to focus more on the process, more of what his goals are as CEO, more of the actual kind of behind the scenes of Voyager and how they're, uh, again, just kind of setting themselves up to becoming a major player in the finance space. And, you know, there's a lot of kind of key takeaways that I had. Um, let me know if you want to maybe see a video going through some of the highlights and implications. But uh, again, I recommend you watch the actual thing. It's about an hour long, but kind of more of a podcast. So you can maybe uh, listen to it as you do something else. But hey, that's about that. Um, and, you know, the, kind of the reason I'm bringing this up rather, um, I'm just noticing now is that this massive drop that we saw and, uh, you know, I did ask Steve about this was because of some new kind of marketing thing that Voyager and Pam Kramer, the chief marketing officer, uh, were experimenting with. Um, so, so this dip, you know, at least from what Steve said, is something that shouldn't really be too, too worrisome. And by the looks of it, we have recovered at least decently. And, you know, in addition to that, I do have the, um, I guess we'll pull it up, the uh, Android rankings on the Google Play Store. And it's interesting. Um, they haven't recovered as substantially here. Um, and, you know, I, I don't really know how to take this. I've always been a little bit skeptical about the Android rankings, Voyager being like top, you know, top seven, top 10, dropping to 90th. They're very volatile, but... You know, we don't really know with pure certainty how big of an impact this has. And, you know, the moment we're going to know is when Voyager releases their next report, which, as we know, we got about another two months before Voyager gives us another update as to what's going on with their business in terms of revenues, profits, users, all that jazz. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. But either way, this is one of those periods of kind of consolidation you know, Bitcoin, crypto, they go in cycles. And we saw this pretty much exact same thing play out throughout the summer where, you know, crypto continued to downtrend. Voyager, VGX continued to go down. And uh, obviously you saw a bit of more uh, positivity kind of rebound into the fall as, um, uh, again, a lot of activity and optimism picked up with growth, with, you know, kind of things along that. So, you know, that's just kind of, the, you know, the, the fundamentals of Voyager. It's really difficult to track this on a regular basis. But, you know, given what we're seeing, I'm not too worried at this point. And in addition to this, as far as customer service goes, I have been hearing better things as to the fact that Voyager has managed to at least catch up a little bit in terms of their emails and uh, kind of customer support tickets, which is good. We want to see that. And, um, you know, it's just going to continue to get better. We know that they're working on a phone line. And, you know, kind of my biggest concern for Voyager was always, you know, th this company, um, you know, they have a pretty significant problem with customer support. And they've had that throughout 2021. And, you know, Steve talked about it. This is an area of focus for them but they think they're getting better. And that's, uh, again, one of the things they're focusing on. And uh, if you haven't noticed, I'm just going to pull up Twitter here and go to their page. They've been adding a ton of new tokens to the platform. I mean, every day almost, I'm um, looking at their Twitter and seeing, uh, you know, we're welcoming this token and that token and another token to the platform. It really is quite incredible the speed at which, at this point, over 80 digital assets on the platform. And um, yeah, here we have this one right here, uh, Perp and BNT and Flow and uh, Anchor and LRC and uh, it's the coin of the month there with uh, Link, ICP, ENS, 
There's a ton of different projects here. KSM, Kava, uh, that's a pretty interesting one. Gala, yeah, I could go on and on, but, and this is actually a video here of their um, their debit card in use. If you're, again, interested in that, we'll, we'll get more updates on this uh, when the time comes, but it really is quite exciting. Either way, you know, the company keeps working on the things that they can work on, uh, you know, and that's just what they're going to do, right? No matter what's going on in the crypto markets, this company is going to continue executing and as investors in both their stock and their token, we have to understand that. And the fact that, you know, positivity is always not prominent in your investments, no matter what's going on at the company, you know, and, you know, Amazon is a pure example of this throughout the tech bubble back in, uh, again, the early 2000s. Amazon stock went from triple digits and fell over 95%. That's a huge downward move. And what happened throughout that time? Their revenues grew, their profits grew, their orders grew. And, you know, you look at them now, they're one of the biggest companies in the world. Yet their stock fell so significantly, despite the business continuing to improve. I see a very, very similar situation here with Voyager, where despite fundamentals continuing to improve, you do see a downtrend in their stock price, in their token price, which can be attributed to many different reasons. I did make a video talking about this a few days ago. I'll link that in the description down below. But uh, again, I'm just kind of looking at all of this and you know, nothing's changing fundamentally in my opinion. I'm still holding strong as, uh, again, you look at the VGX token here at around the $2 range. This is about uh, uh, where I like it. Every time I bought VGX, it's been kind of around this 2 to 250 range, which... Um, uh, you know, I, I obviously think it's a, a phenomenal opportunity at these levels. Um, Voyager stock, you know, obviously has been pummeled alongside the crypto market. And, you know, around $8.60 at this point, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But again, you're going to need to see that positivity come back. And I mentioned this previously, you're going to need to see positivity come back in the crypto markets, in what Voyager does, and in the overall surrounding fintech space, as it's not just Voyager. Take a look at this. Look at Robinhood right here. Robinhood does not load. <laughs> take a look at SoFi stock. We'll, we'll take a look at that one first, I guess. Eleven dollars eighty nine cents off from a twenty four, twenty two, twenty four dollar high just a few months ago. Down fifty percent. We can maybe take a look at Hood stock now, which loads down from about an, an actual like eighty dollar high back throughout twenty uh, twenty twenty one. It doesn't show it here. Actually, hit eighty five bucks down well over 80% in reality. You can look at other fintech stocks, like potentially a firm, another company, down from about 160 bucks, down 60% to 60 bucks at this point. So I'm looking at all of this, and I'm saying it's not a Voyager problem. And that's what's kind of keeping me calm and collected at this point. And you know, I'm still optimistic as ever about Voyager's business model and where they're going over the long run as you know, they're just kind of they're just going at it. And that's something that I respect them for. And that's one of the things that Steve talked about, the fact that, you know, what happens happens uh, in terms of price action of the stock, the token, but they're just going to put their heads down, keep working, build out their platform and create something that no one has really created in the past. So I respect them for that. And, uh, you know, that, that's about it. Now, one last thing that I want to do with all of you before signing off here is take you through an actual fair valuation of Voyager as a company and kind of where I see it at this point in terms of where it should be trading at uh, in terms of the stock. Now, when it comes to the token, again, I've talked about this in the past, the token is much harder to predict because it's not actually you know backed by an underlying business. It's backed by Voyager's loyalty program, which should continue to develop as the platform grows and expands. But again, this is more of a um, just kind of bet on the platform that, hey, you'll get some awesome rewards. And at the same time, as the company grows, you should see some price appreciation, which um, hopefully over time that will be recognized. Maybe if uh, we do exit out of this kind of mini mini bear cycle that we're seeing over the past three months. Now, again, when it comes to the actual stock. Let's go through it. This is Voyager's latest press release that we got um, again just about a month ago, where Voyager went out and reported $165 million in revenue for the December quarter. Now, within this $165 million, we do have to account for a few things that aren't really profitable. For example, their merchant revenue, which we can get rid of $15 million bucks for that, which is essentially um, the payment kind of 
yeah, funds processed through the Coinify platform. So, uh, you know, they only take about one to 2% of this in actual gross profit. So we have to understand that, hey, this doesn't really have an impact on Voyager at this point. It may in the future, but right now I'm going to count this out. And, you know, that does add to a bit of a more conservative estimate here, which I'd rather be conservative than overly optimistic. And they don't actually mention the exact uh, lending and staking number, but I'm going to assume 50 million, which is what they said in a previous press release where um, they said that for the fourth quarter of 2021 in their fiscal year, the second quarter, but for, again, the quarter ended December, we can expect at least 50 million bucks in staking and lending revenue, which they then pay out to their customers through the percentages that you get on a, a monthly basis by holding these coins at Voyager. And, you know, at this point, they are actually spending more than they take in on that. And that's one of the things that Steve talked about, the fact that, you know, at least at this point, they're spending more money on yield to attract more customers. And that money can almost be viewed as uh, marketing expenses, which makes sense for a company growing this significantly. Either way, this is not profitable for now. It will be at some point in the future, but not now. And this $15 million doesn't really impact anything. So we can get right around $100 million in that highly profitable transaction revenue, which is really what I like to look at in terms of where Voyager is at right now as a business. So I'm going to kind of translate this into actual numbers here, $100 million, and divide this by the 1,075,000 funded account number that they finished the quarter off on. And this gives us right around $93 in revenue per account throughout the quarter, which is uh, pretty good actually in comparison to some of the other ones. But what we can do after this is take all of this, divide it by three, and you get roughly 31 bucks in revenue per account. That's the actual number that we want. So what we can kind of do is go over to the spreadsheet. I'm gonna put $30 just to make the numbers nice, be a little bit more conservative, multiply this by about 1.1 million accounts, which you know, it's at this point over a month after Voyager reported 1,075,000 accounts. So, you know, if something I'm being a little bit conservative here, but uh, again, you get to these numbers here as far as uh, yearly revenue goes, just about $400 million. And you know, I'm going to assume a 50% operating income margin, kind of looking out and saying, all right, if Voyager scaled back on their marketing expenses, if they chose to spend less money on a lot of the innovation that they're going through right now, then they'd be much more profitable. But they're choosing to spend money on those things, which, you know, obviously is a sacrifice you're willing to make as a growth company. So, you know, just I'm kind of looking at all of this and saying, okay, under a reasonable situation with some taxes and a variety of PE ratios, you know, this is a $16, $25 stock here today. Now, as I mentioned, what's the main thing kind of driving this down into the dirt well it's a lot of the fintech stocks moving down in a major major way and it's also cryptocurrency so if we see those two things rebound voyager stock is probably going to do pretty well you could also say that i'm being optimistic given that december was an awesome quarter you know you could go more conservative with about a 20 dollars number here assuming more of a, a how do I put this more of a kind of conservative market in that there's a, a potential drop in crypto prices like we've seen throughout January, which, you know, keep in mind, this $30 number was achieved even though cryptos peaked in November, right? We got to understand that Bitcoin peaked in early November, yet they still achieved this number, right? That, that's a pretty impressive feat to take into a kind of all things considered. So, you know, we'll see what ends up happening here, but I'm looking at the actual numbers here and everything makes sense because they still have yet to launch a lot of products that will have a significant increase in engagement. Something like the debit card, although it won't really make much money for Voyager, it sure as heck is going to get people drawn into the platform, utilizing the platform, checking their app more times per day. And that's all kind of a positive for the company. And then you obviously have international expansion, launch of stocks, new token additions, just kind of the expansion of the platform, which um, should drive this number and this number up, which are the kind of the, the two things we want to look at. Either way, I'm looking at everything. I'm seeing a lot of positivity. And uh, again, I really do hope all of you look at this in the lens of even though Voyager stock is dropping, it's not because their business is impacted in any way, shape or form. You know, sure, their business goes through cycles. It goes through volatility, 
But at the end of the day, they're continuing to execute on their goals. Sure, you can criticize them on certain things, but they've managed to achieve record growth. And this year, in my opinion, is where Voyager proves a lot of those haters wrong. And it's a year where I think they're going to focus on product innovation. They're going to focus on things such as customer service to build out one of the best platforms in the game and compete with a lot of the larger companies like SoFi, Robinhood, Coinbase, etc. Eventually, it will get its respect. I'm going to keep covering it, letting you guys uh, in on a lot of the things that are going on. And obviously, let me know in the comment section down below if you did enjoy this video. Uh, in the description down below, there are two links, one to Loom, my recording software, which I use for every single video. Awesome, very easy, and Ticker, my stock uh, analysis tool, which both have pretty awesome free versions, which um, again, I highly do recommend you use. Either way, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.